Now, a story on social media a few weeks ago began developing. One particular lady was attempting to break a world record, a Guinness world record. What for? For cooking for the longest amount of time. This story was developing in Lagos, Nigeria, and one particular lady, Hilda Bassi, was doing this. Well, we've come all the way from Accra to Lagos to find out the lady behind this incredible feat. She succeeded in not only beating the record, but crossing and adding an additional four hours to it. Well, coming to her restaurant, My Food by Hilda, we're about to meet the wonderful lady that is Hilda Bassi. Come with us. Hello. Hi, Hilda. Hi. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you okay, too. so we have a, a nice assortment of dishes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what are what are the dishes? Okay, so this is jollof rice. Uh-huh. This is native rice. Native rice. Coconut rice. Coconut rice. rice. Okay. Asun rice. Asun rice. This Ooh. Is porridge. Okay. Sweet potato porridge. Rice, it goes with the sauce that is coming. Right. We have um, fried beans. Fried beans. Okay. Oh, this is similar to a meal in Ghana. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so so <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Turkey chops. Moi moi. Uh huh. Moi moi. Grilled turkey. Grilled chicken. Grilled chicken. Grilled fish. Grilled fish. Uh, seafood okra. Ooh. Uh, we're still making more, more things. Okay. We're kind of selling out real quick, so we're Aha. Okay, so now the yeah. okra yes. and the chicken yeah. and that asun rice sounds like a good idea. So that's what you like. I right? think so. Let's do that combination. Okay. <laughs> so yes, we are here at the beautiful establishment that is food, My Food by Hilda. So our award-winning, literally record-breaking host, Hilda, um, is going to serve up some of the exciting food she has on a daily here at her restaurant. Yeah, she has a successful eatery where there might be plans to do even more of that. We're going to be finding out what are the big plans Hilda has. What can we be expecting from a Guinness World Record breaker? And a whole lot more right here on TV3 New Day. <laughs> Hi Hilda! Hello. First of all, you're even more gorgeous than, than, than we thought uh, oh, and then the pictures even do justice too. Oh, thank you so much. But let's start from the beginning. When did the idea occur? I, well, so five years ago you decided that you were going to work on this. When, how did it occur to you? Um, so I used to always be obsessed with Guinness World Records. Okay. Like I used to. Well, I remember asking my mommy to buy me like books the books. The books, yes. So I really liked it. And then at the time, when I thought about it, I did not know there was a, a record like Already. that. I was just talking to my brother and I was like, ah, imagine someone cooks for a very long time, you know? And he's like, mm. so I think like maybe six months, six months to a year after, mm. I now really now put in to like see how I could register. And I guess in this time, in my small mind, I, did, I had no idea what it entailed to wow. do that. And at the time, the... Um, um, Chef Lata had just gotten the record, oh. you know, so I, I know I, I remember reading there that, oh, I was going to have to wait, you know, a couple years. Oh. I can't remember how long it, it took. was, but I know that it did say that, oh, I, I had to wait for a while. And I was like, you know what, okay. And I guess I'll say like, as God would have it, I wasn't in the position to be able to do it at mm. that time. Mm. Because again, mm. I hadn't built a brand. Mm. It wasn't something I could afford, mm. you know, so I just wasn't even in the, in the mental or physical place where I could do it. So I'd say the journey of preparing was now me, you know, building my brand, building my person and just getting to meet the kinds of people that I needed to have in my corner to be mm. able to make, you know, the dream alpha team even happen in the first place. And then um, sometime last year, in the beginning of last year, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to do this. So I now reached out to my project director, like my executive producer, and I, at the time we're just friends, and I said to her, you know, I have this idea, this is something I really want to do, and you know, I've planned for it, I've saved up, and I think, you know, we can just roll with it. And the minute we had the conversation, she's, I mean, she's always believed in me, and mm. always believed in, like, what I'm capable of. Mm. So when I told her this, she's like, you know what, she was very, like, um, spot on. So yeah. the minute we had the conversation, she opened a WhatsApp group. Wow. And then, yeah, you know, and then 
you know, she called, um, she called Shoma and then we had a whole, it was a living room conversation. So we had this talk and they were like, okay, yeah, we're, we're going to need PR and we're going to need, you know, we started putting like a few pieces mm. together. We need to make sure we do this by the book so that we can get the actual record. We need, you know, and that was just how the conversation started happening. And she now started having conversations with other people. And that was how the team started to come together. And, you know, for the longest time, I'll say for the first three months when we, we actually embarked in it, because we, mm. we started the, pl- the actual planning mm. in December. And, oh. you know, up until March, uh, you know, I was still like, mm. can we, should we? Oh my God, is this, you know? <laughs> this About really to happen. happen. Yeah, is this going to happen? And obviously, the, the closer I got, the more we realized, like, you know, this, this is a lot. It's, mm. it's going to take mm. a lot out of mm. us. And at mm. the time, we had tried... You know, I had put in to get a Guinness World Record adjudicator come to Nigeria, mm. but we hadn't gotten a response. We had gotten the approval to attempt the record, but we haven't gotten a response as to how, oh. like, how to go mm. about getting mm. an adjudicator mm. to come. Now, in the guidelines, they gave us um, a couple of other options. So in an event where you couldn't get an adjudicator come, other people could stand in. So you could either get um, police officers or lawyers, mm. Mm. and for timekeepers, you could get like um, football referees mm. and coaches. And now trying to put together that team oh wow there was a, there, there was an entire rule so they could only work sh- they could they had to be two per time for both the witness and the timekeepers and they could only work shifts of four now what that meant was that we we're going to need at least 12 people on each team you know so it, it was it was honestly a my lot. goodness and then, you know it's one thing to you you could do this as a home cook mm. and do it in your house but I, I'm very, I'm very like yeah, elaborate. out there, like, yeah. Kind of know how Nigerians mm, are. We mm, like mm. to yes. Yeah, so and for me, I felt like I wanted Nigerians to experience this with me, and I wanted to share this with as many Nigerians as I possibly could. So in in the process of planning, it was for me. I said to them, we need to make this as big as possible. So when you know I was getting the budget for these different things, I was you know I was like, we're trying to we're trying to feed like. 800 people per day in the worst case scenario. My goodness. And at the end of the day, we had... Thousands. Like the videos was crazy. And that was, you know, that was what was so profound when all the other brands now jumped on board. Take me to the the cast list. So like on on WhatsApp, we have like, we have like about seven groups. Mm. So we have an evidence group. We have the alpha team group, which is like the core team Mm. that pretty much started fleshing out the idea, which comprises of myself, Edcon, the... Um, um, staff members from Econ Digital, Blanche Igo, we have Noah Sibo, my my executive producer, we mm. have Choma Elili. So, like, that's the alpha team. Mm. Then we have the culinary team that was headed by Chef Gibbs, our culinary mm. director, because yes. it was yes. important that yes. we adhered to food safety regulations and things like that. And, you know, we had to flesh out the menu, we had to do an entire, like, breakdown as to what, what I was cooking at each, each time. Wow. So, there was like a timetable. So, there was like an 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is what she's making, you know, and all that. So we had, and that team comprised of about 30 people. My then, goodness. You know, the alpha team comprised of, you know, about 35 people. Then, My you know, we goodness. had the full team. Mm-hmm. Then now the evidence team is now, this. these are people collating this together, making sure that we're, we're um, uploading it at exactly mm, as in the, the time. Guinness World mm, Record Guidelines. Mm. Now let's go to the meal prep. Okay. Um, literally having set meals arranged in a different time so that you could cook consistently so you personally were cooking for 800 people how, how many people were you cooking for so, for your um, meals how we how we were able to organize it was firstly i started by doing a dry run okay so the dry run um i did here okay. in the restaurant for 24 hours mm. and um what we now did was um gibbs was on ground and he took measurements of every single thing and um, took measurements of the yield, which is wow. how many people were yes. able to feed with what I made mm. in 24 hours. And what we now did is we're going to have to step that up a notch because we have a lot more people to mm. feed mm. and then manage the quantity. So what we were serving were like mini cup tasters yes. because we feel like, oh, the people that will be there from morning to mm. evening mm. and then they get to... Um, they get to eat, you know, consistently. Consistently. Yeah. So we just need them to. We just need them to try the food mm. just enough. It's not. It's not an a full yes. meal, but it's just enough to get you started. In terms of prep, I didn't do a lot of actual prep. Mm. They you had there a was team. Like a, yeah, I had a team, so there was an actual. So they didn't do any pre cooking for me. Ah. They didn't pre marinate anything okay. for me. So um, all they had to do was basically, if I need carrots, the carrots are washed and then cut mm. and then it's sent to me. I if like I need that. rice, the rice is washed and, and it's sent, sent to you. Me. So everything I'm getting is 
really pretty much good to go mm. like on the so you just now throw so it into so I just have to mm, now do the actual mm, cooking, cooking of it but in terms of like oh washing the onions mm, cutting the mm, onions mm, you know I didn't have to do that that's it, that's amazing yeah. and I love the thought process that went into it now let's talk about your thought process throughout yeah because standing alone <laughs> for 12 hours or 18 <laughs> hours and we've all had shifts where we've gone long days but to stand for over four days straight yeah how okay take us through the different mindsets at 24 hours how were how, how, how are you feeling yeah so i'll say the hardest day was the first day okay and it was pretty much because i started as at a disadvantage because how um we were scheduled i was scheduled to start at 10. Mm. I, obviously i was anxious the entire night before mm, and you didn't sleep much yeah and i didn't sleep much so i was up at five and i got to the venue at like 7 30 to make sure everything was done but obviously at the time i got there we had a few technical issues that mm, the production mm, team mm, was trying mm. to sort out you know the cctv guy was working with jason just to make sure everything was fine there was a lot of press that i needed to address as well you know so just going up and coming down and doing all that um i was very eager and for me there was a crowd already waiting mm. so in my head i'm like they're waiting to eat and i need to start cooking something you know so i started at 4 p.m but as at 4 p.m., I had you already been rested. up for oh. at least, I think, I had already been up for about 8 hours or 10 hours. On your feet, on my, talking, you know, up and dealing, down, you know, yes. talking and dealing. And 6 hours in, my body has started to tell, you know, so I, mm -hmm. and then I, I feel like it sort of dawned on me, like, the gravity of what I, I was actually doing. And now the fear had set in, so mm. the fear of failure had set in. So I was, basically, I was battling physical exhaustion, like tiredness. I was pretty much battling a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear, like those ones that come with physical pain. Yes. You know, so I, pushing through that, I would say it required a miracle from God because mm. at, at a point we had to break into like worship and prayer because wow. that was pretty much all. At that point, I would say God was pretty much all I had yes. because my body had honestly failed me because, you know, my body was pretty much done at yes. this point because I think I'd put it through too much. Especially too soon. prepping so quickly all the week, the exactly. entire week. So that wow. week was a very big yes. week, you know, so it was, my body was kind of telling me like, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. So I just, I turned to God. My friends, you know, Sydney had come and he was, in front of the glass dancing and telling me oh hilda look at me they were like oh what kind of music do you want to listen to oh you know like the, the public was out there with me praying with me you know and just there was so much support so much my kitchen assistant at the time they were supposed to run shifts of six hours but in the end i, I only worked with two kitchen assistants in the booth with me wow. because after i had worked with him for about 12 hours or six hours and he was to go on a break I, I, for some strange you were, reason, you, were, you I felt couldn't, attached. I couldn't, yeah, I, I became attached. I couldn't continue without him. And then Gibbs had had to go back to ask him if he could do a bit longer. And he was like, you know what, I'm going to be there with her the entire time. You know, however long she needs me to be there, I'm going to be I'm there. I'm going to be there. I still had a couple of lows, mm. you know. But every time it, it came, I would just start talking to myself. God did not bring me here to fail. Absolutely. I am the light of the world. I am a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. You know, his grace is sufficient for me. I, you know, I would literally just keep speaking positive words. At a point, I just realized, oh my God, you have been asking. You need to thank. Yes. I started to give thanks. Yes. I started to praise. And I was just like, you know what? You've gotten me here. The fact that you've gotten me here is already enough. good enough. Whatever happens, my praise is going to be the loudest. There was a point that, um, on social media at least that they said that um, based on the stress, you, you, your, your period came early and yeah. you had to deal with cramps and all of that. Yeah. That was, was true. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was on my period the entire time, which I think that sort of made it extra, extra hard because you know? i know how the that, pain what is that meant was it took away from the time that i mm. had to rest mm. now i was trying to rack up because i get five minutes after every completed one hour so if i stand for 12 hours i get one hour to rest now i still have to do my medical checks and oh god bless the medical team mm. um, coffee girl essential they were amazing they were on ground like all the time doing my vitals massaging my leg and trying to do everything in record time you know so because I was on my period, I had to take a shower every single break I had. Like, if yes. I had 30 minutes, I had to take a shower in that time because I needed to change. Yeah. My dad was... <sighs> my dad was worried because I have 
horrible cramps, like really horrible I, cramps I, on I a normal see, day. I recognize you it. You know, so ah. just pushing through that. I was Next like, level. You can conquer this. You can conquer <laughs> this life. Now, at the 88th mark, uh, when you realize that you're about to literally break the Guinness World Record, how did you feel? And now getting to 96... You decided, I'm going to push through for the extra four hours. Mm. Describe that. I'll say, I'll, let me say, um, when the 80, 88th mark, I think it was more significant for the people that had been yes. watching me yes. than yes. it was for me. Okay. Because for me, it wasn't, a, it wasn't in, the thing. Yeah, in my Guinness World application, you put in the time that you're going for. I had put in 96 hours. I think 96 or 97 hours. So for me, that was the goal. Mm. I wasn't thinking, mm. Mm. at no point mm. was I thinking, oh, I can't wait to Break, so yeah, break someone's record, record, yeah. Well, I remember they had asked me, and I said, You know what? You know that once we get to 88, we've actually broken mm, the record, mm, we now need to set a new record mm, for someone else to break. So, you know, at that point, when I got to 88, I tried not to think about it, like, because I knew that you know what, you still have like another 10 hours to push, to push through, yeah. You know, so at the eight, I think at 88 or 89, my brother and my friend Amma, they've come to me, my Amma has come to me first. I think she's posted on Instagram, like, I think we're going to make you 100 hours. And <laughs> then she's come to me, she's like, how about we make this 100 hours? I'm just looking at her. She's like, no, but think about it. It's Let's a nice this, like, round number. It, exactly, like, it's a nice round number. And I think you can do it. Think about it, like, you've already done this. We, I think you can do it. I think you can do it. And, then she's, and my friend, she's gassing me up. Yeah. Like, you can, no, you can do You've it, done it this you know? much. And then I'm just like... Mm. That's the extra four hours, though. That's like extra, uh, and I'm, this is 88 hours. Like, I see, I'm, like, it's, it's a long time. It's a long time. It's a long time. And then my brothers come and, you know, voice of reasoning. Even when you just hear it. Yes. Says, anything he says, it just sounds like sin. Like, yes. You know, so he comes nice. and he's like, you know, I, I honestly think that it will make a lot of sense mm. if you make it 100. Just think a about nice it. Round just think about it. It will be really nice. Mm. It will be a nice mm. round figure. Mm. And mm. I think you personally will be very happy with your achievement. Like Hilda 100. Yeah. Push to 100. Yeah. And, you know, and so in that moment, I started to see reason. And mm. I'm like, mm. okay. So I asked Gibbs, I asked my culinary director, you know, do we have the raw materials? Because mm. we are just restocked. And he's like, Hilda, you can be cooking from now to tomorrow if you want. Ah. We have raw materials for it to feed more people. And I'm like, you know, okay. It, I because mean, a hundred. Yeah, it would take I me there. Like, okay, <laughs> so maybe he wants to brag a little bit. Let's do it. <laughs> and that was how I was like, you know what? I gave them the go ahead. I'm like, okay, make the announcement. We'll do it. Wow. And, you know, the energy was just there. And you people know. were excited. Now, support. You literally had like all of Nigeria's oh. media, socialite, oh celebrity status pass through. Some of which I'm sure you didn't even, you didn't even know them. Ha. No, wait, wait, you really did it. Like, I followed them now. Uh -uh, I'm the fan. <laughs> of course, <laughs> but then to know that they came through you know, for you. You like, that they came through, I think that was, there, there are a few moments that still stay, like, fresh in my head, you know. And firstly, it was everybody being there <gasps> under the rain. And that these was are not, epic. This is not about, like, celebrities. They are you know? not getting paid for no, it. They're just there they to support there. you. It's not like they are eating. It's not like in the first day that oh, there were yes. that many yes. and the food was surplus. Yes. Now is it's not even enough not to go around. Yeah, this is a, this it's is just not about food anymore. It's just you want to. I just want to be here. I want yeah. to see how to yeah. do this. You know, I'm yeah. invested now. Yes. So that was the first thing that that got me, and I, it was such a huge pillar no, of support. Honestly, I saw you know, that. And he came, and first of all, he started playing around and eating at first. And then he was so invested. Mm. Sydney was so invested. Harmony was so invested. Harmony was like, Harmony is like, you know, she's like, Harmony understood that nighttime, that's it's, when it gets Yes. Hard. So it's like he's gearing up for nighttime. Because you are like tired, you are sleepy. Nighttime. Like he's screaming down, like nighttime. Sydney is like dancing, he's hosting, he's singing. He's reminding me, Hilda, you need to look at them, you need to wave, you need to smile. Mm. You, you know, and. You have so much going on. Yeah, like, so, oh my God, there's, there, there's so many people. And then the governor of Lagos State came mm. through. And he didn't just come. He ate and he chaired the crowd. Wow. And I'm just like, okay. The governor just me, came. Yeah, and for me, it meant a lot because it, this is not election. So this exactly. is not a No, no, you no. Know, this it, is, this honest is, support. Yeah, this is support. Like, this is, you just want to be here. And it meant so much. And I'm like, you know, Tiwa Savage came in the dead, in the dead end of the night. 
you know, just to come and say, I support you, you're doing very great, you can do this. I, I spoke to the vice president on the phone, I spoke to my current governor, you know, on video call. Wow. There's just, you know, like, it's almost like so much happened. Yes. And then every day I, I just... I remember, you just remember, I remember something one small, one yes. I remember one new thing. I remember Tenny came and I gave her seafood okra. <laughs> and I remember Choma was there. And I, you know, and it's just like, as the day goes, I remember, like, Nancy, IK, IK, IK came after an event. He was exhausted. He came, he spoke to the crowd. He cheered me on a bit. My goodness. He went back, he came again. No. And he's like, yeah, I've got, I'm telling you, Banky and Adesu, I came in the morning, and I remember I was half asleep. I was crying at Kara. <laughs> and I was half asleep in the morning, and they were like, baby, baby, you can do this. Baby was not asleep. Baby was just there. She's not there. And baby was just like, baby is done. Baby can't do this anymore. And they were still there. And they were just, they were, I mean, so many kids, Henshaw, like, Amazing. And these people, like, dead end of the night. Like, Amazing. It's like they knew that you would need that support. It was almost like they understood that, mm. you know what, mm. It, mm. I think they almost shared themselves into shit. Yeah. You know, some will hype you up in the morning, yeah, some will so do it in the afternoon, in the, in the evening. Morning, some in the afternoon. You know, other, like, food bloggers that I look up to. Yes. It's Kitchen. Yes. Tolani, you know, um, um, Kitchen Muse. Like, Gina Foodies and Spice, they were just all there. You've inspired so many people. Because, honestly, in Ghana... Like, everyone's WhatsApp status was your picture. Like, every media person I knew was talking about it. We, we were live on radio when the, um, the announcement for the 100 hours came. So I was like, okay, in four hours, I'll be off radio. And by that time, we'll see the, the 100 hour mark. Like, when I checked, I, said, I think it, I started scrolling through, trying to find live feed because everyone felt so invested in your success. Now, there's a... I saw a tweet somewhere that said that you were actually allowed to sit down. Was that true? Yeah, I didn't realize it. Ah. I didn't know my sister. My God. In my dear. Hi. Even me said. You know, Justin <coughs> had, we had this debate with my brother as well where they were like, um, I think you can sit because they did not put longer standing cooking. Yeah. And the few videos I had watched of Chef Lata on YouTube, she it wasn't sitting, she was standing. <sighs> so I'm like, it would hurt me to my to just Lord. To be disqualified for that. This, and then I'm disqualified just because I sat, I down. sat down. What am I using my legs for? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was hard. It was incredible. Of course. Sydney gave me his shoes. He turned Sydney's shoes into an ice bucket because it was really big. So we were putting ice in it my so goodness. that I could step on yes, the ice. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you know, almost at every point in time because my feet were numb. You know, and it, we needed, my feet were burning, so we needed to numb the feeling. So we're using ice a lot to do that. And when we, we we're done, I now find this tweet where there was a video of her sitting down. And then I couldn't, I think I couldn't even bring myself to open my mouth and say it's that, oh, my sister, you could sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you don't mean it. <laughs> it would so, have saved you a lot of heart. You know, so what we're doing now is we're going to put in for, you know, that, longest as a standing yeah, as a cooking. Category. So that's like another record that, mm, you know. You have broken, yeah. literally. So. That's incredible. I didn't realize it. I didn't know that I could sit there. If I knew, maybe I would have sat down. 56, You are an icon. You've, be, you've set a pace and you become the standard for to marry, like, uh, people that are literally tenacious like you cannot give up you are the standard right now and it's a lot of pressure but do you feel it now personally i don't feel the societal pressure of what's the next big thing you're doing because before this one big thing who was looking out for the big True. thing that you're doing you know? so that's something i True. constantly have to yeah. like reinforce and tell myself is you understand what your purpose is you understand the goal so just it's like a roadmap. Mm. what does it take to achieve that and mm. actualize that that's what I'll keep doing. Well, thank you, Hilda, for this wonderful conversation. Thank we you. love you in Ghana. We're wishing you all the best. Thank We're you. looking forward to seeing you soon. Um, I honestly, I, I, I mean, I've said this, but I love Ghana. Uh -huh. I, I really, I want to explore. Yes. Ghana. I want to come there. I want to. I want to cook there. You I must. To, yes. no, no, no. Let's do this. You will cook live on TV. Yes. On the biggest morning show. Yes. TV Three New Day, <laughs> and we can bet on that. So then, that's where we'll yes, start the cooking yes, from. Yes, okay. Yes, so yes. live cooking on I'm TV honestly, I'm by Hilda. I'm looking forward to coming to Ghana. No, we love that. Yeah, I, we love I that. Can't wait. Yeah. I honestly cannot wait. And we are gonna make sure that that happens. Yeah. 
Sue come, Sue come. But Hilda, you are an absolute delight. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you for inspiring us all. Thank and we look so forward much. to more. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you. And ladies and gentlemen, what else can I say? The woman that has inspired us all has truly shared her story. And what a story it is. Hilda Bassi is about to do massive things in the world of culinary arts and is truly going to take over everything we know and love in African cuisine. Congratulations.